Welcome to the DFS Build MLB edition. I'm Kevin Roberts, joined with Taylor Smith. We are back after a bit of a break. I've been sick, so that's my excuse. Taylor, I don't know what yours is, but uh, actually he was off uh, yesterday, at least. Mm -hmm. the weekend. But hey, uh, NBA kind of turned into a hot mess, as it is one to do to end the year. So we kind of stayed away from that anyways. Uh, and then we got the playoffs coming up. Today's a two-game slate. I may or may not punch one out, punch a video out on that. Uh, it is a tiny game slate, so who knows? Anyways, we are going to go over the MLB slate for the main slate here with 10 games. Uh, we're using DFS Hero as our lineup optimizer for projections, and you can too. You can uh, hit our link below in the video description for a 15% off discount and give it a whirl. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's get right into it, man. I mean – we're a little bit rusty here. We've been away for almost a week, but fucking A. All right, we got the Yankees and Blue Jays in Toronto. Eight. Uh, we got eight run total here, and the Yanks are road dogs. Um, looks like it could be a pretty explosive game. You got two high strikeout pitchers, but also two guys who can get hit pretty hard and give up a lot of contact, and also two lefties against teams who have a lot of powerful righties. So I honestly like both sides. I know the system is digging Toronto as it should, but I kind of, I kind of like Yankees too. So how, how are you feeling about this game? Yeah, I think the Yankee side's pretty good. I mean, they're both kind of wide split lefties that do have some strikeout stuff. So it's not a perfect spot, but Toronto in particular is a very low strikeout offense against lefties. So I don't mind them. They also just don't have a ton of power. Um, the lineup's not super imposing to begin with. So I'm not really going to get to either pitcher. I think Rodon is cheap, but just not really up spot. Um, even on this slate, without a lot of cheap hitting, I don't think it really is what. Um, if I get to anything, it's probably going to be Yankees first, Blue Jays second, Rodon third, and then I'm probably not playing uh, Kikuchi at all. Um, I'm 100% on board with you there. Um, let's see. Let's actually check the stack IQ percentages here. Right now, Toronto is the third most owned, and the Yankees are very, very far down this list, which I like that. 1% um, leverage stack percentage, uh, and they have projection for, for over four runs. So I'm with you, man. I like the Yankees quite a bit, uh, and even more so because Toronto figures to be pretty chalky on this slate. I'm um, not looking at the pitching at all, but I do understand the merit, especially with the Jays being pretty uh, chalky. All right, next game we got <clears throat> Guardians and Red Sox at Fenway Park. Uh, let me go to click on this game here. We got Tanner Bibby going against the Red Sox. Uh, he actually looks pretty good here, I'd say. Uh, they don't have a ton of uh, reliable lefties, and he's been crushing lefties over the past year. Guardians are facing Garrett Whitlock. I'm a little bit less interested in him just because the Guardians are not a very high strikeout offense, and Boston does give Bibby a high strikeout matchup. So that's where I'm at, really. <clears throat> um, I don't love playing a pitcher in this park ever, and it's not like Boston has no power or anything, so they are kind of dangerous. But um, he's been really, really good against lefties, and they strike out a lot. So I actually like Bibby, and that's kind of the only thing I'm looking at in this game. How about you? Um, I'm going to be getting to a lot of Cleveland, I think, against Whitlock just because they're cheap. Uh, a lot of lefties, Fenway Park, the best hitting park on the slate. So I do like them as a value stack here. Uh, Bybee, Isn't not really getting to. Huh? Isn't the wind blowing down in this game? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. All right, let me check because I thought it was. I was like, ooh, that's kind of interesting, actually. Um Sorry for those waiting. Let's see. Boston. It is. Blowing out to right. So <laughs> that could be problematic. I still like Bibby, but, I, I mean, if you want to go Boston or Cleveland at Fenway, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. It, it's always in play. This game I does think the issue with him is he's not cheap, like 87. Like there are a bunch of other pitchers in that range, I think, are in better spots. So I don't really see the need to pay up for him, you know, it is a high strikeout team, and they're not that good, but I think the park might kind of neutralize it for me. Yeah, I just like him because just the strikeout upside is there both for him and for the matchup, and also because he's not carrying ownership right now. 5% owned Bibby on this slate is kind of appealing to me. 
I'm not saying Locke Bibian. He's not my number one pitching play at all, especially in this park. But I do like him uh, a lot more than the field, apparently. All right. Um, is, do, you, do you want to say anything about Boston or or? Um, I'm not really looking their way either. It's just not a very good lineup right now. And okay, so you're not you're not super high on Bibby, but you're also not racing to go play Boston stacks. No, I think okay. Cleveland's the main source of intrigue for me here. Okay, so we're pretty much aligned there, to be honest. Okay, so we got Pirates and Mets in the next game. This game has a lower total. Let's check it out real quick. Seven and a half. So it's projecting as a pitching duel between Jose Quintana and um, Jared Jones, I think it is. So uh, I'm not really looking at the offenses very much here. I, I was looking at the deeper numbers, and um, I know Quintana is not exactly elite at this point in his career, but the numbers don't really grade out very well for the Pirates here. And um, – I don't personally know that much about Jared Jones, but I'm not excited to stack Mets based off how he's looked so far. Yeah, he, I think he's a huge prospect. So him being good is not a huge surprise, but I don't know. He's like, he could have a lot of problems and stuff. It's not the easiest spot, even though it is a good park. Um, he's another guy that's really not cheap either. So I'd just rather go with uh, kind of some of the more established options like Lance Lynn or Hunter Green in this range. Um, this game as a whole is really not intriguing. I'm not really getting to Pirates. I'm not really getting to Quintana. And I'm not really getting to the Mets. So, yeah, it's kind of just a stay away from me. <laughs> I will say that sometimes when these young guys come in and crush for a few weeks uh, or a few games, obviously there's going to be that game where they just face plant and, like, welcome to the MLB and, you know, life gets real, real fast. So if he's going to be owned, he's coming in at 16% owned, if that ownership is going to be there or a little bit higher – the Mets look pretty interesting as just a leverage stack. And if I look at the numbers here, I bet they pop as a leverage stack. Nope, not quite, but uh and they're gonna but they're not gonna be owned either. But I don't know. If he's gonna be owned, the Mets are a little bit interesting for that reason because he's young and inexperienced. But I also will probably be staying away from this game, and I probably will be more on the Jerry Jones side than the Mets. Uh Royals and White Sox, that game looks like it's not gonna play, right? So Yeah, let's just skip it. Yeah. All right, Padres and Brewers. Um, we have Dylan Cease taking on Milwaukee. Milwaukee's offense has actually been pretty good this year, um, but he's really a uh, tough, cool, a tough pitcher to face and a high, high high K upside. The price is egregious, uh, but it, he you know it might warrant uh, us looking there anyways, just because um, the Brewers do still have some whiffs in their lineup. Uh, so Cease looks good. And then on the other side, Wade Miley, no interest there for me personally, and not even sure he's that attackable with the Padres. So I'm probably just looking at Cease and maybe a couple Brewers leverage stacks if he ends up being really chalky. Yeah, I have about 10% of him. He's just priced up, and the other guys that are cheaper are you know, projecting similarly. Park downgrade for him, so I'm not getting to much of him. I do think the Padres are one of the better stacks on the slate. Uh, park upgrade for them against Miley. Uh, obviously, no strikeouts. He's kind of like a pesky ground ball guy that knows how to pitch and stuff. But Padres against lefties project pretty well in general, top to bottom. So I do like them quite a bit here. As Zokar as a cheapy, Tatis, Machado, Bogarts at the top. Campusano is a pretty good hitting catcher. Um, yeah, I think there's actually a lot to like, and I will be getting to them quite a bit. Yeah, I, I guess my only concern is that he really doesn't walk people and he doesn't give up a crazy ton of power. So <clears throat> he's just not like – he always feels like he's – you're going to be able to pick on him, but it like it almost never works out. So more power to you if you stack Padres. I probably will not be doing that. Um, I probably just want to have much exposure to this game uh, beyond Cease and maybe a sprinkling of the Brewers because Cease is coming in at uh, 18% ownership at the moment. If that holds or inflates, Milwaukee at that uh, park will look kind of inviting uh, just because they do they do have um, some power, actually. Um, all right, so Braves obviously are always in consideration. Uh, Reynaldo Lopez starts for them against the Astros. Hunter Brown has been absolute dog shit. So I actually – I mean, you can always play the Braves, but if you can afford them, I especially like the Braves now just to kind of buy into the narrative that Hunter Brown's just absolutely falling apart. Um Lopez in the vacuum looks good, but against the Astros, I can't do that. How are you feeling? Um, 
both teams have pretty high totals. I'm not really playing the stacks. Uh, I have Houston around 3%, Atlanta about 8 Um, The thing I'm actually getting to the most is Hunter Brown, <laughs> like uh, almost 20%. He's only 6'5", so he's pretty cheap. And when he's right, he's a pretty good combo of ground balls and strikeouts. Obviously, he's been quite poor of late. And this matchup is about as daunting as it gets. But, you know, he's cheap on a slate without a lot of cheap pitching. So I am likely to play him over the field. And I don't feel good about it. But it is what it is. Nor should you, sir. Um, I mean, he's a talented pitcher. Before before what we've seen this year happened, um, people are pretty excited about him. So I can't fault you for that based off the price alone. But it is the Braves, so I don't think I'll be doing it. Uh, I also personally haven't found it that difficult to get pretty good bats I like uh, beyond Atlanta and the Dodgers um, with the pitching on this slate. So, uh, yeah, probably not going to go there. Uh, on the Houston side, are you interested in the Astros at all going up against Lopez? No, not really. Okay. All right. Moving on, we got the Cubs and the Diamondbacks. This looks like a pretty good game for offensive uh, firepower. Arizona looks plenty good against Kyle Hendricks and Chicago on the other side face Tommy Henry who gives up just shitloads of power and does not strike out anybody. So I mean, pick your poison. I like both stacks. I would favor the Cubs here and I think that's what the system's favoring too. I'd start with your righties, but full Cub stack they're totally in play. Um, Hendricks he doesn't really walk anybody, but he doesn't really strike anyone out either. I just think if the, if Arizona can get it up in the air, then they look viable here. Uh, but I would probably side Cubs here. What are you thinking? Yeah, they're just the cheaper of the two offenses. Like Arizona's kind of tough to stack with like four of the top five are over 5K. So you got to really make sacrifices elsewhere. Um, Henry has like a major reverse split. So I don't mind getting to like Bellinger in this spot against him. The rest of the lineup's fine, obviously righties, but I think Bellinger could be a little bit overlooked in spite of the splits, and he's going to be kind of the key cog in any stack, I think. But yeah, Chicago overall looks really good here. I think they might be a top three stack on the slate for me so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, he does, he does have reverse splits here, but he is kind of an equal opportunity sad sack. He's getting lit up all every which way. So I think, yeah, Belly obviously needs to be a part of the stack. I mean, they're just kind of inherently righty centric anyways. Um, so I think it'll work out no matter how you stack up the Cubs. They look, they look pretty good. All right. Reds and uh, Mariners. This is mostly a game for pitching uh, because we have Logan Gilbert and Hunter Green <clears throat> facing off. I have almost no interest in these offenses short of, getting leverage on chalky pitching because uh, Logan's coming in with 29% ownership and Hunter Green's coming in at 33. So, yeah, I mean, you can play the Mariners or the Reds. They do have power, um, but I'm going with the guys with the K upside here. I like Hunter Green the most, and I like both pitchers quite a bit. How about you? Yeah, I'm not really stacking against them. I'm usually all for that. Like last night I was into the Nationals quite a bit against class now, and it worked out pretty well, but – Man, I'm not really getting to Seattle or Cincinnati offensively. Both pitchers look great. High strikeout matchups. I'm getting to green more between the two because he is like $400 or $500 less. So both are fantastic. Um, but green is who I'd side with between the two. Yeah, I mean, worth noting he's giving he gave up two homers in his last game. He, he obviously can give up some hard contact for sure. Um are Mariners really the team we have to be super worried about when it comes to that? I don't know. Not as much as some other teams. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you here. All right. Uh, Cardinals and Athletics, Lance Lynn and J.P. Sears uh, facing off. I would definitely favor the Lance Lynn side. However, he's also projecting to be quite chalky. So, of the chalky arms, he seems like the most attackable to me uh, just because he has major issues against lefties and the Athletics actually have quite a few lefties to throw at him. Are they super scary lefties? Not really. But if he's going to be like almost 30% owned and they do have, I'm kind of one, two, three, four, five guys at least from left side of the plate, he's given up a 272 ISO uh, to left handed hitters. Yeah, kind of like athletics a little bit. On the flip side, the Cardinals grayed out really well against Southpaws. Or that's, ew, actually, their lineup doesn't look that good. <laughs> well, they historically have, so maybe I'm wrong here. Um, 
But Sears is a pretty attackable pitcher. So in theory, the Cardinals stand out. Well, how do you feel about the Cardinals and the Athletics? Yeah, I do like the Cardinals a lot, even though the park is bad for hitting. Um, Contreras is kind of a top catcher option. Arenado and Goldie, obviously. Jordan Walker's cheap. Um, Victor Scott is also cheap. So I don't mind getting to them at all. Uh, even Newt Bar, lefty lefty, I don't hate. Brendan Donovan <coughs> could still be hitting leadoff here, I think, against the lefty. So I do like that. Uh, Lynn's going to be my highest home pitcher, I think. I'm just going to eat that ownership and play into it, even though it's horrifying. <laughs> So now, now I'm definitely stacking athletics. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That message. I'm gonna get that message in the middle of the night. Lynn's getting his ass lit up, and I'll be like, "Yes, yeah. athletics." <laughs> I'm not really getting to Oakland. I do have about 10% Sears, just because it's cheap and it's a good park. But yeah, it's kind of all aboard Lynn, even though I don't really want to do it. I agree. It. It's like it's sometimes you just have to ride the logic with baseball, and sometimes even if the logic is there, it's just not going to break your way. Lynn is a very, very good play. He should be fine. He's a good price. It is a good matchup. It's still the athletics in this park. The only thing is, if he's going to be chalky, you got to have of Oakland just to feel good about it, I think. So I will have a little bit of Oakland, uh, but I absolutely agree. I'm with you. I favor Lynn greatly. Um, and like I said, I do like the Cardinals a little bit as well. All right, last game of the night here. I don't think I skipped one, did I? Nope. No, I think we're good. Okay, so we've got Nats and Dodgers again. Yeah, Tyler Glass now getting ripped up yesterday. Six earned runs. That was absolute bullshit. Um, so we have, let's see, Patrick Corbin. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. And the Dodgers with a starter uh, yet to be named. Obviously, the Dodgers can be freely st <clears throat> stacked against Corbin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see their ownership, though. Second highest owned team of the slate. So I assume you like Dodgers. Is there anything else people should know about this game? Yeah, it's hard not to like them, uh, especially because they have this Andy Paez hitting second, uh, 2K flat. Good hitting prospect. Um, just too cheap for the platoon advantage against Corbin. So I, he's going to be one of the most popular players on the slate, but... I get it. It's hard to avoid that, especially if you're stacking them and they're expensive otherwise. Um, yeah, the Nationals look fine. I think it's going to be Yarbrough probably for the most part for LA, maybe out of the bullpen, but they don't look awful. They're just cheap too, like Senzel, Lane Thomas, relatively affordable, uh, Jacob Young, Luis Garcia, Gallo, the whole thing. So similar story with Washington as usual. I don't mind them. Like They're a pretty good speed stack especially, but uh, yeah, focus is certainly on the Dodger side of this game. Uh, yeah, I fully agree. All right, before we wrap up here, let's look real quick at uh, pitcher ownership. Let me get off this game real quick. Let's look at ownership. Up top, we have Hunter Green as the chalkiest arm. We talked about Hunter Green, Gilbert, Lynn. We like all three of them plenty. But just looking at chalkiness here as far as arms go, which arm are you probably – feeling um the best about fading tonight probably cease just because of the salary or jones because i just think there are others in that range i want to be prioritizing over him i'm not sure he's you know the guy he's looked like so far i think he's probably going to be a little bit worse than that moving forward especially with sketchy control so i would look to get away from those two and then rodan if he's going to be somewhat owned i'm not really interested in that either yeah, Rodon just has not been that dude. I'm not really excited to play him ever. All right, let's 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 look at the, the stack percentages. Cubs, as we noted, look good. Dodgers look great. We talked about the Blue Jays, obviously the Braves, and you liked Arizona. So these, these stacks all uh, are projecting to be so, somewhat chalky. Uh, as far as chalky stacks go, which stack are you most comfortable with getting away from or being underweight on? Uh, definitely Toronto. Like Radon's not been good, but he's still not really someone I want to totally go out of my way to attack. And I don't really think that lineup is all that scary anyway. So I don't mind fading them or being under on them. and being over on San Diego and Cleveland for this part. Yeah, I'm not with you on the Padres going against my Brewers. <laughs> but that probably is just bias that is going to just you know drive me into the ground. As far as unknown stacks, come here all the way at the bottom. What stacks stand out that could be offering major potential today that people will be overlooking? Um, really nothing. I guess Oakland, Washington. 
would be the standouts. Gays are all fairly low. I think that's probably too low for them with Kikuchi kind of having some power risk. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, man, that does it for us. Hopefully this game by game breakdown helps you out a little bit, helps you build your lineup. Just remember there is major variance when it comes to baseball, so even the most logical picks can go absolutely apeshit wrong. Just like Tyler Glasnow last night, giving up six earned runs to the fucking Nats at home. Baseball. <laughs> it sucks, but it's awesome when it's going right, man. When those dongs are flying over into the stands and your pitcher has 30 points, baseball's kind of the best DFS sport. It's just it only goes right about really is. once a month, right? Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Please give this video a like so we know that you watched it and you enjoyed it and it helped you. And then also give our channel a subscribe. It helps us know that we are doing the right thing. It also gives you an alert to every new video that we push out. All right, well, thank you for tuning in and good luck tonight.